kick his ass. <laughs> you talking to me? I'm talking to you. Come on. This adventure starts with us leaving Trona Pinnacles, where we camped overnight in the last episode. We made our way back to 395 and headed south, then cut over east to Highway 40. Then we took a short section of Route 66. This road is in bad shape, but we found this old place and took a lunch break. Watch for transients walking down the middle of the road here. Anybody home? Anybody home? After an excellent lunch and a cold one, we got back on 40 heading east. Next, we took 95 north, filled up at De Chevron, then came back south and went west on the Mojave Road towards Fort Paiute. We elected to skip the eastern section at the Colorado River. There is no camping at Fort Paiute, so we pulled off the road and made camp for the night right here. Fort Paiute, around the mountain, further up the road in there. Right, the rough one that we were taught on. Um. It's a road? Massive flash flood must have came through here. Fort Paiute, built to last. In 1867, a U.S. mail route was created along the Mojave Road between San Bernardino, California and Prescott, Arizona. Military escort relays were established to protect the mail riders and Fort Paiute was one of several outposts built to house the escorts. Shortly after the fort was completed, the mail route was changed to a more southerly route and the fort was abandoned after less than six months. The fort was built to last. Its walls remained nearly intact until the 1930s. All the forts and camps that were stationed out here were strategically located near sources of water. If you follow the cottonwoods up the, the creek side up there, you will run into Paiute Spring, why this location was chosen. We left Fort Paiute and we're climbing over the Paiute Range. Looking back in north, Fort Paiute is over on the other side of that big mountain there. So you gotta come back out this way, south, connected to the road.
little higher up uh, the Paiute Mountains now, and this is the roughest section, uh, as I recall, from the, the whole Mojave Road. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a ditch running down the right-hand side up here, and it continues up around the bend, and uh, a little bit further is where the road was actually washed out. I'll show you that on a uh, Google overhead view in a couple of seconds here, and there's a 29-mile bypass now that is recommended. You can uh, call National Park Service, uh, .gov, Moja, plan your visit conditions.hdm for uh, updates or just call. I don't have the phone number handy, but you can find it on their website. Mojave Road is also known as Old Government Road, formerly the Mojave Trail. It's a historic route and present-day dirt road across what is now the Mojave National Preserve in the Mojave Desert. This rough road stretched 147 miles from Beals Crossing, the river crossing site on the west bank of the Colorado River, opposite Old Fort Mojave, roughly 10 miles southwest of Bullhead City, Arizona. Okay, does it tell us to zero anything here? Not yet. Uh, okay, so yeah. There's nothing to sign. There is a bunch of coins in there. There's a can. I can't see there's so much reflection on this thing. With a pen, and here's another can. Some pennies and stuff. So we got. So, from this segment two, zero, um, Mojave Road passes through a dense Joshua tree with the craggy New York Mountains, Tour 35, looming to the north and northwest. Nevada Southern Railway. Well. The Landfair Valley is south of the New York Mountains along Ivanpah and Landfair Roads. This high valley shelters an impressive Joshua tree forest and was an early ranching and homesteading center. From 1893 until 1923, the Nevada Southern Railway ran up the valley from Goffs, California, providing services to homesteaders and ranchers in the valley and to miners in the mountains beyond. While little evidence remains of the homesteads that once dotted the valley, tracks of private property still exist, so please respect the rights of landowners. I was going to say, don't want to uh, lose our water. But there's water. Um, <clears throat> is it warm? Okay. Home, the old stone homestead off to your right. Yeah, okay, so this is the road to Crothers Canyon. It's always... And then at mile 7 is Cedar Canyon Road. You turn right to Cedar Canyon Road. Okay. I thought we had to continue straight.
I could not find any information on this cabin except for uh, Tony Hugel's mention of it as the old stone homestead. Nothing else. There is a lot to see out here on the Mojave Trail. You can come out here back and forth uh, for years and just go up all these different offshoot roads and explore. It's kind of like Death Valley. There's a lot to see. So um, we're not going to hit everything on this trip, that's for certain. But uh, getting a little later in the afternoon and we want to go find a campsite. So no, I wasn't really driving that fast. I sped up the film. The Rock Cabin was built by Bert George Smith, a World War I veteran who came to the desert to recuperate from poisonous gas exposure in 1929. There's a short trail here that goes down to Rock Springs, which is, winds down over that way and then cuts back behind the cabin down there. We didn't stop there. I wish we would have, but we'll have to come back. But anyway, this uh, rock house was allegedly built with the rocks taken from the Camp Rock Spring area ruins. Smith lived here until he until the mid-1950s, he died in a rest home in 1967. The next longtime resident after that was Carl Faber, a desert landscape artist. As you can see, this place is very well built. Keep it cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Okay, we left uh, Bert's place and then we headed west and then south on Black Canyon Road where we're heading down to the hole in the wall campground area and we're going to hike the Rings Loop Trail and that's the beginning of it right here. So come on along and uh, we'll show you some petroglyphs as well. Very interesting area. Looking back where the flag is flying, you can see the visitor center where we came from, and uh, Maricela bought a nice new hat there, too. Cultural signs of the past. Scattered on some boulders here, you will find rock art images that provide windows into rituals, beliefs, and artistic abilities of humans who lived in this Mojave Desert area perhaps thousands of years ago. Or maybe it was just like kids today. They just like to scribble on stuff, or tag it with a paint can, make their mark, and then call it art. I don't think we can get through here, dear. It looks like the trail's been blocked by a slide. We continued around the wall and the slot area of this uh, hike is known as Banshee Canyon. The hike itself is only a mile and a half. But it is very popular because it's right next to the Hole in the Wall Visitor Center and the Hole in the Wall campground. So expect a lot of traffic depending on the season you come out here. We actually didn't run into anybody. Maricela the mountain climber. The slot portion of this hike only accounts for 0 0.2 miles of the one and a half mile loop. The remainder crosses scenic desert slopes to the south and east of the rocky outcrop, passing a good variety of desert plants and giving long distance views across plains and mountain ranges. Whoa. <laughs> the 
as you can see once you get past the rings you still have some scrambling to do Headed back north on Black Canyon Road in search of a campground. We're not camping at that campground, that's for sure. And we ran into this uh, steer fight, but I only caught the rear end of it, get it? Come on, kick his ass. <laughs> you uh -oh. talking to me? I'm talking to you. Come on. We continued north on Black Canyon Road and found this excellent campsite with incredible views all around, tucked into the boulders just off Wild Horse Canyon Road. You can see the Holloman Wells in Round Valley just off to the right of the boulders in the distance. I'm going to be showing you lots of 360 degree views around here, so uh, make sure you continue to watch. It's gorgeous. Sima Road. From here, the sandy road resembles a roller coaster with numerous humps and dips. I suggest letting your engine idle as you cross them and pass through a region thick with creosote bush and Joshua trees. On the southern slope of the Sina Dome, Kelso Dunes can be seen to the south. Look, there's the dunes. Yes. In about 4.7 miles, Mojave Road has brought you to the northern tip of the Beale Mountains. That must be them straight ahead. So we have to go 4.7 miles. The road's severe undulations diminish at this point. <laughs> oh, so we got four, five yeah. miles of this. Yes. Woohoo! Maricela was reading that from Tony Hugel's 
California, Desert Byways. An excellent book, Tony. The campsite at the 5.5. There's a few more rings over there. Yeah, it said uh, there's a few campsites here. For your information, three of the four major North American deserts are found at Mojave National Preserve. The Mojave, Great Basin, and Sonorans. Dozens of seeps and springs coupled with varied elevations and soil types create microhabitats that support a diversity of plant and animal life. Cactus gardens or elicit plant communities of white fir and chaparral, and the densest, largest Joshua tree forests are all found right here. I thought this was one of the more scenic sections of the park. The landscape, uh, plant life was much more diverse and you had the cinder cones and the uh, uh, Kelso sand dunes in the distance. Uh, lots to see. Beautiful area. But we're going to have to come back later and check out the dunes and explore uh, some of the southerly and northerly sections. Uh, there's a lot to see and we didn't want to rush through it, but uh, we'll that definitely the be there. That you signed? Yeah, that's the mailbox. Cool. It looks like it's a pretty family home. Deserts do strange things to people. And I think this is why you end up finding some strange things out in the desert. Forget to sign the logbook and leave a little treat in the box. Money in the Windows into the nether realm. There we go in. Watch your step. Very careful walking in here. It's hard to film and walk at the same time because you want to look at the, uh, the screen so you know what you're filming, but you fall in here, this stuff will tear you up. Yeah. Back on the Mojave Road, deep sandy section, you want to keep your speed up, but be aware of hidden rocks underneath the sand. There's this lenticular clouds. That mean it's going to be windy on that? This section of the trail uh, was much quicker. Uh, nice soft sand. You could drive a little faster. And uh, a little bit less interesting as well. But we're trying to make it to Afton Canyon.
Minnesota Lake is wet sometimes and dry sometimes, weather depending, of course. Alternative names for the dry lake include Alkali Flat, Alkali Sink, Playa, or Pan. Since we're alone, we're going to use our brains and not cross it, uh, you know, just in case it's wet out there. We don't want to get stuck. Okay, we picked up the Mojave Trail again over here towards the Afton Canyon area after gassing up in Baker. Take an I-15 over the Basin Road. This one's for you, Choo Choo. Choo Choo is my friend and co-worker, Dustin Yates, who is a train hobbyist. Afton Canyon is designated as an area of critical environmental concern to protect plant and wildlife habitat and to preserve scenic values of the riparian area within the canyon. Early western explorers passing through this area included Jedediah Smith, Kit Carson, and John Charles Fremont. Remember John Charles Fremont from the Fremont River Crossing in the Cathedral Valley. The route following this road, known as the Mojave Road, is a rugged four-wheel drive scenic tour running from Fort Mojave on the Colorado River near Needles to Camp Katy near Harvard Road. Afton Canyon is one of the few places where the Mojave River flows above ground, making Afton an ideal location for bird and wildlife viewing. The area is ideal for hiking, hunting, camping, nature study, rock hounding, horseback riding, and vehicle touring. Since the campground is recessed into the canyon and shielded from light, it is a popular destination for stargazing. Don't forget to keep watching because I'm going to show you a pretty good full moon time lapse. Check local weather forecasts before visiting the area. Thunderstorms can result in flash floods in canyons and washes. Tell a friend or neighbor where you are going and when to expect your return. Bring sufficient water, food, clothing, tools, and first aid supplies for your activity. And please, tread lightly. to go out there and check. Yeah, go ahead. I'll wait here. <laughs> we'll get moving a little closer to the edge, don't you think? 
wood edge. This grassy edge? No? You want to go out and walk? No. here to uh, get us through this but I wanted to show you some of the, the campground here so you get a good idea of what it's like but uh, yes yeah, always reduce your speed in the campgrounds because usually little kids are running about and pets and you don't want to kick up a bunch of dust and disturb your neighbors but as you can see there's plenty of space between these campsites and it's, uh, it was nice and quiet while we were here but the wind did pick up and start ripping through this canyon at night and it was really blowing. century petroglyphs. Maybe that's what the native children were doing. 